Welcome to Public Domain Video Theater, presented by the great detectives of old-time radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for this month's episode of Dangerous Assignment. This one is Season 1, Episode 16, Original Air Date, December 1951. It's entitled The Caboose Story and was based on a radio play from October 6, 1950. Let's go ahead and take a listen. for me? Yes, Steve. I want to talk to you about something personal. Oh, okay. Shoot. It's about love. Love? You heard me. Well, I'd hardly say that came under the heading of dangerous assignment. You sure? Well, on second thought, maybe sometimes it does. Steve, remember Marta Seba? Marta Seba. I can remember the time when that name was sweet music in your ears. Oh, yeah. Pre-war Vienna in spring. I thought she was the loveliest young doll until I found out that she was one of the most dangerous of she spies. Well, why dig up old grade? Yesterday, one of our agents, McCloskey, spotted her in Tokyo. Tokyo? What's she doing there? Well, as you know, there are two things that always go together. Martha and trouble. Ah, well, hey, haven't I been reading about a lot of sabotage in Japan lately? Exactly. Trains derailed, bridges blown up, the works. It's seriously hampering our entire effort in the Far East. You think Marta's in this deal? That's what you're flying to Tokyo to find out. Uh, well, Commissioner, don't you think maybe you ought to send one of the other agents after all? Marta and I were kind of friendly before I found out about her. That's exactly why I'm sending you. In those days, she knew you as a foreign correspondent. Keep it that way. All right. Who do I contact over there, McCloskey? Uh-huh. He's staying at the Kuro Hotel. Get over there, Steve. Talk to him. Try to get a line on Martha, and if she is behind this sabotage, then prove it. This sabotage must be stopped. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Sure, I've got my assignment, and on the surface it sounds great. Take a little trip to Tokyo and renew my acquaintance with an old flame, but I've got an uneasy feeling that before the deal is over, that old flame is going to turn into a grade A blowtorch. It's Tuesday afternoon when I arrive in Tokyo. At the airport, I get a message from McCloskey to meet him at the casino. Oh, hi, Steve. Good to see you. Same to you, Mac. Quite a joint. Yeah, quite a favorite of Marta's. I thought it might be the best place for you to bump into her accidentally. Yeah. Hey, you think uh, Marta's behind this sabotage ring? Well, it's only a guess, and a guess is no good without proof. We set a trap for tonight. If it works, you can go home real soon. How long has Marta been hanging around here? Well, she's apparently been in Tokyo for about two years. Although the other day was the first time any of us spotted her here. She lives in a very swank apartment. It would be Marta. Always has a couple of guys in the string. Likewise. And apparently he's been throwing plenty of dough around. Sounds like Marta hadn't changed a bit. What am I supposed to do? Stick around here and see if I can spot her? Right. I'll check you later. And stay away from the roulette table. Can't tell. I might pick up a couple of chips. Steve, you know Marta better than I do. She can be about the most dangerous thing on wheels. So? So be careful. Make sure it's only chips you pick up around here. Not a slug. <laughs> Thanks for the note, Cheer. Sure. 
17. Tough luck. Oh, sorry. You should be. Martha. Oh, Stephen. Sorry. That's what I call a real welcome home. Tom, we have so much to talk about. Will you take care of these for me? Place your bets. Oh, sorry. It's been so long. I can't believe it's you. Let me look. No, you haven't changed a bit. Leave the review, Martha. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm furious with you, Steve. Furious with me? After nine years? What did I do? It's what you didn't do. Remember that night in Vienna? You said you'd come back later. You never did. Oh, that? Well, uh, they sent me back to the United States all of a sudden. Well, it'll take me at least five seconds to forgive you. You're still writing for those silly newspapers? After a fashion. What uh, brings you to this neck of the woods, Marta? Oh, Stephen, that's a long story. I'm a good listener. Mm. Well, uh, after the war, I ran into one of your GIs in Europe and married him. Met him and married him? Sounds real fast. Well, one of those silly things, you know, Stephen. Lasted quick. Oh? But there I was married to him, so I went to the United States with him and uh, later came here to Japan with the occupation forces. Oh? Oh, well, now, don't be silly. I'm not married anymore. The boy died a few months ago, an accident. Oh. Poor boy. He was so nice. Oh, well, and so now I'm working for an importing firm here, but what does all that stuff about me matter now that we're together again? I guess they don't, Marta. Oh, darling, you have so much to say to each other, and it's such a poor place to say those things. I guess you've got a point there, Marta. Here's my address. First floor front. Will you come to see me tonight? Are you kidding? About nine? Mm-hmm. Hello, Marta. Oh, Bill. Uh, oh, this is a very dear old friend I want you to meet. Stephen Mitchell, a newspaper correspondent. Uh, Stephen, this is Sergeant Bill Duncan, a very nice boy. Well, thanks for the build-up. Hello, Mitchell. Sergeant. Well, I guess I'd better run along. Oh, must you leave? It seems to me I had the date to meet you here. Of course. It's just that I thought, uh, well, I would be seeing you later, though, won't yeah. you? Yeah. Glad to have met you, Sergeant. Yeah. Me too. Peace offering for being late nine years. <laughs> hey, quite a place you've got it. Yes, it's nice. So are these. Well, looks like I get the full treatment, huh? Treatment? Soft lights, sweet music, but no incense? Oh, well, Elmer usually supplies that, you know. Elmer? You remember Elmer. I've had him for years. Oh, yeah. I remember Elmer. 
conversation. What? Oh, yes. Something the matter? I suppose it's just the excitement of seeing you again. It must have gone to my head. Headache? Mm, slight one, I'm afraid. Well, in that case, maybe I'd better shove off and let you get some sleep. Oh, darling, I feel just terrible about it. Would you mind? No, not at all. Tomorrow night, perhaps? Yeah. Perhaps. Good night. I don't need a crystal ball to tell me there's been a slip and the phone call had a lot to do with Marta's sudden headache. Either she's going out or somebody's coming in. Almost immediately, I see it's the latter, Sergeant Duncan. At this point, I figure I'd better see what kind of a line I can get on him, so I head for the office of the Transportation Corps. Corporal, you holding down the fort here? Yes, sir. The captain's out right now. Maybe you could give me some information I'd like on an enlisted man, a member of this command, Sergeant William Duncan. Well, we have a little rule around here. When somebody starts asking questions about one of our boys, we kind of like to know who's asking, sir. Corporal, that's a very good rule. What do you want to know, Mr. Mitchell? Anything you can tell me about Sergeant Duncan? He's a file clerk, I think. Hmm. Did he ever mention a girl by the name of Marta to you? Marta? Sure. Sergeant Duncan was a friend of her husband, who was killed in an accident a couple of months ago. I see. If you want any further information, the captain ought to be back here in an hour or so. Fine. I'll, I'll be back later. Okay, sir. I go back to my spot across from Marta's apartment. Nothing has changed except the beggar is slumped against the wall. 11.01, I get a big surprise. The guy who comes out is not Sergeant Duncan. It's the man I noticed at the casino. He passes the beggar without a glance, which isn't unusual, but the beggar doesn't ask for money, which is. It's McCloskey. Mr. Mitchell. Captain Ames is in now. Thank you. Yes. Captain Ames? Haven't we run into one another before? Yes, this afternoon at the casino. And about a half an hour ago outside of Marta's apartment? I never saw you there. No. Oh, yes. Government agent. Ames, Army Intelligence. Oh. <laughs> what can I do for you? You have a sergeant named Duncan. Yeah, I'm on my way to see him right now. Well, I'd like to come along and question him with your permission, if I may. I'm afraid he couldn't give you much in the way of answers. Why not? I just had a call. Duncan's in the caboose on a freight siding out in the sticks. With a bullet in his chest. Medical examiner's through, but I didn't want him to move anything. Bullet hole in the chest at close range. Another slug creased his skull. And went out there. Captain, did you know that Duncan was mixed up with Marta? Afraid you're barking up the wrong tree, Mitchell. Am I? Duncan wasn't mixed up with Marta. He was out to get her. What do you mean? 
On account of the sabotage, we've had our eye on Marta for some time now. And Duncan was working on the case? Yes. He had a personal motive, too. He was convinced that Marta had killed her husband, who was Duncan's friend. Oh. Well, I guess that puts a new light on Duncan. It makes it an open and shut case, Captain. Well, how do you figure? Well, McCloskey, before he was killed, said something about a trap that they'd set for Marta. Yeah, the civil and the military had a plan worked out, but uh, something happened. Marta wouldn't fall for it. Yeah, that figures. While I was in her apartment, she had a phone call that upset her very much. I figured somebody called her and tipped her off that Duncan was wise to her. So she got him to drive her down here and shot him. Well, that's a logical explanation, all right. And there's just one thing wrong with it. What's that? It's impossible. Impossible? Why? Well, you see, this train is the uh, Kobe Freight. Somehow, the saboteurs learned of its new schedule, and they uh, derailed it en route, delayed it for a while. Well, so? Well, I figured that Marta would know something about that, so I dropped in on her. I got there about, uh, well, 10 o'clock, and as you know, I left around 11. Yeah, but I still don't see what that's got to do with it. Well, the medical examiner said that the time of Duncan's death would be around uh, 10 o'clock. What? Yeah. And this sighting is a good 20 minutes drive from Marta's place. She couldn't have killed Duncan at 10 and have gotten back to her place by the time I arrived. There goes our case, blown right up in her face. Yeah, sure does. Well, let's see, you know, can't get it out of my mind that Marta did it. Well, like I say, she couldn't have, Mitchell. Yeah, you sure you couldn't be wrong about those times? No, I don't think so. Let's check. Yeah, let's see, you were there until 9.30, Duncan arrived at 9.35, and uh, when I got there at 10, she was alone. 1.30. Might not be too late. What for? Pay a little call on Marta. <laughs> you still think she did it, don't you? Yeah. But thinking it and proving it are two different things. Yeah, they sure are. Particularly when it so happens that I'm Marta's alibi. Yeah. That's what I was just thinking. But it's worth a try. Want me to drop you by her place? Yeah, please. I'm not really sure why I'm coming here. The whole deal is beginning to look like the proverbial stone wall. It's my hunch against an airtight alibi. Ames says he's Marta's alibi. Could it be vice versa? Steve. Steve. Why, Steve? Martha, I... Oh, it's late to be calling, but how's your headache? Much better, thanks. Why, this is such a pleasant surprise. May not be so pleasant, Martha. I uh, have some bad news for you. What? That, that silly newspaper isn't sending you away again. No, it's about your friend, Sergeant Duncan. Bill? What about him? He's been murdered. Murdered? Yeah. Oh, no, no, I, I can't believe it. Who did it and, and, and why? Why would anyone want to kill Bill? That's what the army is trying to figure out, Marta. Poor Bill. He was so nice. Strange. That's what you said about your late husband, too. Stephen, what do you mean? Oh, skip it. No, wait. You... You don't think I had anything to do with this? Why should I? There's no reason at all, but... Uh, another thing, a... Uh, Captain Ames came to question me this evening. He, he arrived shortly after Bill left. He, he wanted to talk about all this, uh, this sabotage that's apparently been going on here lately. Something about... Freight trains. That's strange. You wouldn't know anything about that. Well, of course not. But it, it, it frightens me that anyone should even think I could be involved in such a thing. Oh, well, it was probably nothing but routine questioning. I suppose so. Oh, let's not even talk about it anymore. How fix is a drink? Soda or water? I said soda or water. Stephen. Hmm? Aye, but you were a thousand miles away. Not that far. 
Perhaps I shouldn't have interrupted your train of thought. It's one train that isn't getting anywhere. Might even say it's been derailed. Uh, what is it, Stephen? Marta, I got an idea. Let's not stay here. Let's go out and do the town. Oh, it's pretty late. Oh, it isn't too late, is it? Well, if, if you don't mind waiting a few minutes. Oh. I'll... All right. Alibi or no alibi, I still think Sergeant Duncan was killed in this apartment. I checked the furniture for bullet holes, pictures, chairs, etc. Nothing. Then I try the carpet, and I know I'm right. Don't be impatient, darling. No hurry. Then I see an old friend, but he's in a new spot. Mitchell is here. We'll leave my apartment in two minutes. I know what to do. Just one more second, darling. Take too long, darling. No, I enjoyed the rest. I thought perhaps you were restless. Restless? It sounded as though you were walking around. Oh, well, I was looking around. You poor dear, you're tired. I have an idea. Let's stay here and just talk. I got a better idea. Let's you and I go down to military headquarters and have Captain Ames charge you with the murder of Sergeant Duncan. Steve. That joke is in poor taste. I love Bill. Poor Bill. He was nice, yeah, I know, end quote. Believe me, I know nothing of all this. All right, let me fill you in on it. You killed Duncan and McCloskey. You're also the little lady that's running this sabotage. Come on, let's get the party over. Very well. I did not kill Bill Duncan. Stefan did. He is here to do the same for you. When you dug out that bullet, you were digging a grave. I don't need two guesses whose. How did you know? Oh, I tumbled to a couple of things that Captain Ames hasn't tumbled to yet, but he will. You can't get away with this, Marta. You're the only one who knows Duncan was killed here. I'm sorry, Steve. Very sorry, but I must let Stefan put you away. Well, you've done it before. It shouldn't be any novelty. The difference this time is it is someone I could almost be in love with. Oh, now we go into the hearts and flowers? You didn't think I was going to make soft music with a cobra. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. Makes it so much easier. Stefan. No, that is too noisy. A garotte. I tumbled to the deal about the same time you did. Yeah? Well, next time, tumble sooner, will you? Yeah. Captain Ames, this is all a mistake. Yeah, and you made it, Marta. 
Stephen has the preposterous idea that I killed Sergeant Bill Duncan. So do I. But that's impossible. Oh, now, save it, Marta. I've been outside that door ever since this seedy character came in. Bill was shot at the railroad yard at 10. You came here to see me a few minutes before 10. You couldn't have known what time he was shot unless you were here when it happened. But you said it. I said nothing. Before you had a chance to dispose of the body, I was knocking on your door. You probably dragged the body into the next room and hid it there while I talked to you. After I left, you got your stooge to help you carry the body down to the railroad yard. There was already a crease in Bill Duncan's head, so you wanted to make it look like he'd been killed in that caboose. So you fired a shot past his head and it went through the side of the caboose. You cannot prove he wasn't killed there. Sorry, Marta. You picked the wrong train. You got hooked because your train was late. And the reason it was late was because your boys derailed it. Didn't get in until after 11. So you see, at 10 o'clock, there was no caboose in the yard. The time that Bill was killed. Welcome back. As usual, it's interesting to compare the radio and TV versions of the same story. Now, I will admit that there are some differences I don't know the reason for. Uh, it, for example, in the radio version, the corporal was a male from Tennessee. Uh, though the ending may be the biggest difference. In the radio version, there was actually no henchman involved. It was just Marta with her gun trying to shoot Steve. Ames proved his name by firing at Marta through a conveniently open window and hitting her gun hand, leaving her alive and well enough to spout the usual villainous curses. If I were to speculate, I'd imagine that it was another case of early television not being able to effectively stage the somewhat implausible stunt that worked on radio the thug also does explain how she moved the body. As I don't think looking at the actress on screen, it's quite believable for her to have carried man of the sergeant's weight down there all on her own. However, the big final scene comes with problems of its own. Even though I appreciate Steve not being intimidated by the gun and fighting for his life, Marta gives up on strangling a little too quickly. She goes from, that method of killing is too noisy, to firing and shooting her own henchman in less than 15 seconds. It doesn't make much sense. It's also worth noting that in the radio version, Ames was a lieutenant. However, the TV version made him a captain. Maybe Lyle Talbot insisted on that. But uh, the credits l list him as a lieutenant. Maybe he got demoted for that whole standing outside the door and letting enemy agents murder a U.S. intelligence agent thing. The TV version is also missing Steve's closing pun that Marta had cooked her own caboose. Although, depending on how you feel about puns, that may be a case of addition by subtraction. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you for watching. You can follow us on social media or contact me by email at box13 at greatdetectives.net. And be sure to check out our website at greatdetectives.net. If you want even more video theater, be sure to subscribe to us either on YouTube or in the Apple Podcast Store. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like this video. Finally, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for their support. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.